Assalamualaikum and good day. In this video, we're going to learn more about Servlet for web application in Java EE. In this topic, we're going to cover three subtopics as shown in the screen. First one is creating and running Servlet. The second one is the Servlet API. And the third one is session tracking. Now let's learn how to create and running Servlet. Basically, there are four steps to create Servlet. First step is create a project. Second step is create a server. Third one, check the deployment descriptor. And lastly, start the server and run the project. Okay, let's look at the first step. So basically, you need to create a project in the NetBean. So the directory structure in the project will define that where to put all the different types of files so that the web container may get the information and respond back to the client. Second step is we create a servlet that extends HTTP servlet. In this example, we are inheriting the HTTP servlet class and providing the implementation of the doGet method. Right. The third step, we configure the deployment descriptor that is web.xml. So this file is located in your web pages folder in the project. The web.xml contains mapping for your servlet name and also URL pattern. Your pattern is the parameter that will be appeared in the web browser after you deploy the application. Next is um, to run the project. So what you do is right click the project, select run and NetBeans will deploy your web application and automatically open a browser of the web application. So now you are ready to open up your web project. Alright, let's move on to the servlet API. So, for Servlet API, it actually provides the interfaces and also classes that support servlets. So, this interface and classes are grouped into two main packages. So, the first one is javax.servlet and the second one is javax.servlet.http. So, basically, in the javax.servlet, you also have many interfaces and classes that are used by the servlet or web container. So some of the classes in the Java Extra Servlet are Servlet Config, Servlet, Generate Servlet, Servlet Request, and also Servlet Response. In the Java Extra Servlet.http, you also have many interfaces and classes. So some of them are HTTP Servlet, HTTP Servlet Request, HTTP Servlet Response. So the most important classes are actually reside under uh, HTTP servlet package. Now let's discuss about servlet interface. First of all, what is servlet interface? Servlet interface provides common behavior to all the, the servlets. So servlet interface defines method that all servlet must implement. So servlet interface need to be implemented for creating any servlet. There are five methods in servlet interface. The first one is init method. Second one is the service. Third one is the destroy. So basically, three method here is actually from the servlet lifecycle. In the next one, you will also have get servlet config and also get servlet info. Now let's look at generate servlet. For generate servlet, so what is it actually? So generate servlet is actually a class that can handle any type of request so it's a protocol independent so you may create a generic servlet by inheriting the generic servlet class and providing the implementation of the service method so basically there are many methods in the generic class so some of the methods are init method servlet conflict get servlet info and also get init parameter Next, let's learn about HTTP Servlet class. So basically, HTTP Servlet class extends the generic Servlet class and implements serializable interface. It provides HTTP specific methods such as to get, to post, to hit, and also to trace. So basically, in our lab exercise, we have actually used this to get and to post. So basically, what to get does is actually handles the get request. And also for do post, handle the post request. Now let's move further to another subtopic which is session tracking in servlet. So first of all, what is session in web? A session can be defined as a series of related interaction 
between a single client and the web server over a period of time. So tracking is actually the recording of the thing under session. So we can conclude that session tracking is recording of client conversion in span of time. So it's called a session management. So if web application is capable of recording of client conversion in span of time, then that web application is called as a stateful web application. Why we need session tracking? So because it is useful for something like online shopping, mailing application, e-commerce application to track the conversion of user. So we also use HTTP protocol in the web. So basically HTTP protocol is stateless. That means in each request is considered as the new request. So in the figure here, it shows that the first request is new and also the third request is also considered as new. So why use session tracking? So basically session tracking, we use it because we want to recognize the particular user that used the web application at a particular time. So basically if you look at this table, so we can get an information on the session that the user are in the web application. So basically the ID, the session value, the creation time and also number of previous access. Okay, the value for this okay in the session or the web. So in servlet, so it allow four techniques to call to track the conversion. The first one is cookies, second is hidden form fields, third one is URL writing and the fourth one is HTTP session object. So let's discuss each of these session tracking techniques in more detail. So let's look at the first one, session tracking using cookies. So a web server can assign a unique session ID as a cookie to each web client. And also for subsequent requests from the client, they can be recognized using the receive cookie. So basically how it works. So by default, each request is considered as a new request. So in cookie technique, we add cookie with response from the servlet. So cookie is stored in the cache of the browser, for example, in your Chrome or Firefox at the client side. So after that, if request is sent by the user, cookie will add it with request by default. Thus, we recognize the user as the old user. So this is how it works for session tracking using cookies. Next, let's look at session tracking using hidden form. So session tracking via hidden form is tracking client conversion using HTML hidden variables in secure manner. So for example, a web server can send a hidden HTML form field along with unique last name like this. Okay, so the value here is Amina. Alright, so when this form is being submitted, so the specified name and value are automatically included in the get or post data. So each time when the web browser send request back, then the last name value can be used to keep track of different um, web pages. So you can use this okay, to get the value back if you want to submit from a form to another page and then to another page. Now let's go further and understand the session tracking via URL writing. URL writing track the conversion in server based on unique session ID value. So if the client has disabled cookie in the browser, then cookie are not work for the session management anymore. So in that case, you can use URL writing technique for session management. So URL writing will always work if you use something like um, a token that consists of name or value pair separated by an equal sign that appended on the URL. So basically, this is your URL, this is the parameter name, this is the parameter value. So this is for parameter 1. So if you have more than one parameter that you want to do the tracking for the session, so you can add the parameter um, subsequently uh, after the URL. Alright, currently, there are some problems of session tracking with hidden data and cookies are that data are not secure and difficult to deal with large set of data. So to solve this kind of problem, Java Servlet API provides a session tracking tool which enables tracking of a large sets of data using 
HTTP session objects where the data can be stored as objects and data also are kept on the server side so they are secure. Session is available until the session time out, until the client log out. So the default session time is 30 minutes and you also can configure a specific session time in the web.xml file. So basically to use the Java Server ABI for session tracking, first you need to create a session object using the get session method in the HTTP server request interface, something like this. So you need to create the session object. This is the HTTP session class. So you set first the get session equal to true. So basically your session has been created. So in this figure, you can see that the first request, okay, and then you create a unique session ID. And then the second request also will create a unique session ID. So these two users will have two different unique session ID per session in that web application. So let's look more about this. So how it works actually, on client first request, okay, and then the web container will generate a unique session ID and give it back to the client with the response. So this is a temporary session created by the web container. So the client will send back the session ID with each request. So this will make it easier for the web container to identify where the request is coming from. So the web container will use this ID and find the match matching session with the ID and associate the session with the request. So this is basically how the uh, HTTP session object works in the web application. That's all for now. For more detail on server for web development, so please read chapter 3.2 in my Google site. Thank you.